name is Juro Kastelix. I was born in and bred in Slovenia. I went to school, high school, um, and got quite early into photography. I'm from a town that has had like a really big documentary photography festival. And as a kid, as a 12 year old, 13 year old, I went to the, fe to the festival where I would be learning the basics of photography. Uh, the basics of photography there is a little bit different uh, to just taking pictures, but it's about the story, about the narrative behind our documentary photography. We were hosting people like Martin Parr, for example. They were doing, um, doing these courses for a week in August. And that basically kicked my interest, artistic interest, to start thinking about art in general. And I, uh, I won this uh, little open call through local National Geographic uh, magazine uh, that I, I was given a, a camera as a, as a prize and that basically at 12, at 13 years old really kicked my yeah, artistic interest and also then professional interest uh, to stay with photography. After I finished high school, I, um, I moved to Brighton to study photography there. Um, and I, after about three, yeah, after three, four years, I, I moved from Brighton to London uh, to look for a job. There I was looking for jobs um, that would sustain my art practice, holding a studio and also uh, keeping up with life in, in London, which is very expensive. Um, so I was very lucky to get a job at Massimo de Carlo Gallery, where I used to work as a registrar. So I learned a lot about um, why people are buying artworks. I saw the insides of lots of artists, their, their, um, their practice. Um, I was more and more um, getting education in contemporary art as such, not just photography. Um, and that kind of shifted also my interest to, to start painting. And then, um, yeah, after a few years, after three, four years, I, I managed to quit my, let's say, four money jobs and, and follow my dream to, to keep working as an artist, only as an artist, and start to commit 10, 12 hours for myself instead of working for somebody else. But that also kind of meant that I needed to get out of London, which COVID was the perfect uh, kind of bad situation and kind of gave me the, uh, the perspective that I do not want to stay in London and work outside. So during COVID, uh, we produced an exhibition in Tenerife. Uh, that was in, a, in our apartment where we were kind of stuck at that time and then virtually shared my new works that I made in Tenerife. And that kind of kick-started like a, a series of, of events and exhibitions that we produced together with my wife. So after the first show in Tenerife, we then went to Milan, uh, where we worked with uh, a space called Fabio Gatto showroom. And we showed 21 of my paintings that proved to be kind of like a good um, springboard to then move to, to Lecce, where we produced a very hyper, hyper local exhibition with lots of Italian artists and artisans, mixing design, fashion, technology with my own paintings. Um, we stayed there for about a year and a half and then afterwards we were kind of looking to settle in because during Covid, Tenerife, Lecce, we also did a couple of residencies in Tuscany. We, did, uh, we tried different places and we loved Venice the most and so yeah, this is where we now have a permanent practice and trying to make it. So my, my practice is now just painting, basically, and, and all my research comes from uh, kind of like three main topics that I try to tackle, and that's uh, uh, desire, values, and, uh, and mythology. And this is kind of goes back to my own deep interest to, to exist as a millennial and, and kind of see how I can use finance as an adult 
uh, kind of to get on the on the ladder of owning your own home or real estate and something that proves to be more and more difficult especially for our generation uh, so I kind of uh, circulate around these topics of desire value as in a sense of why do we ascribe a certain value to like let's say a block of gold or uh, creating a nest egg as this painting is called uh, and kind of looking at ways to um, to see value as not just as a currency that we use uh, but also what what do we ascribe value to that will hold value also for the future and not just just for now um, so I look at a lot of the stuff about um, contemporary currencies I look at the evolution of money as such um, and then generally as a, as a millennial I'm obviously very interested also in the new shapes of of money which is cryptocurrencies so I look at the whole phenomena of the of kind of the communities that are formed um, around these new topics, new philosophies of why we ascribe values to something that is absolutely digital, but it has very real uh, physical value. This work is called Death Athletics and it comes from um, this idea of um, kind of fighting and defending your your values or your your qualities or features that are worth fighting for. Um, I follow a lot of kind of let's say dissidents, for example, like Edward Snowden or Julian Assange, for people that are basically prepared to absolutely um, sacrifice their own private lives for something that is perhaps hard to hear but has has a certain um, truth to it that gets revealed um, and so it's basically just the idea of having such strong commitments and values to to follow them through also for the sake of your own own private life and then there are a few you know like the, this area like with the head is kind of like this this saint type of um, sense of the image um, but then also in general, I kind of like to utilize something that is more timeless, something that cannot be placed in contemporary now, um, but is more looking at things that are very ancient, like um, in, for example, in classicism where, where painters were looking uh, at ancients like the Romans or the Greeks in order to kind of apply the ideas of their time as something that is like less spoiled or like um, like pure in a sense so because we, we are in Venice and Venice is a very specific place where there's never gonna be more creative space let's say so if I want to live and work in the same area I also try to adapt to this fact that uh, storage is something that is costing a lot of money essentially and so I started working with this way um, of producing paintings where I don't need to stretch them until I have a project committed for. So I, I'm, I'm painting on this material called Yuta or Juta. I, I don't know exactly the word. Yeah, exactly. Um, which is a very, very structured, very um, um, kind of hard and absorbing material, kind of very rough. I really like how uh, paint responds to it because it's very absorptive. So lots of paint is needed and I also use uh, only acrylics in order to, to, to paint only in the spaces where I live. So I, I use a lot of washes, lots of, um, yeah, lots of layering essentially. So the story of Venice started basically when I met now my wife. Um, we used to live together in London and um, after all of our trips around Europe and, and going around doing projects, we kind of started looking for a place where we wanted to be more permanent or, or just have a proper home finally. And so we chose Venice because of 
geography <laughs> because I'm from Slovenia and she's from Veneto area. Um, so for us it was very important to be closer to family and uh, bigger groups of friends that basically either live here or are very close. Uh, and then there's also the consideration for um, for the work side. So um, we both work in the arts and at least twice a year Venice is very relevant to be here. Uh, beside the quality of life, the, the lifestyle that you can have in Venice, uh, we, we're very interested in producing some shows here, doing, we're planning an exhibition during the Biennale in April uh, with my wife and I'm also working on a, on a group exhibition in a newly formed uh, foundation here. Um, so yeah, we, we, we love Venice, we love the people, we love the geography, we love the history of it. We used to live a little bit in Lecce before, in Centro Storico, and having the feeling of living in a museum that is alive, we, we kind of love that, that idea. And so now Venice made absolute sense to, to kind of create our life here and do hashtag adulting uh, here. <laughs>